Hello, my name is Mia Solberg, and although this has not exactly been a choice like some of the others have said, um, I am here today as a graduating senior to talk about, my, uh, about how Count North Union has played an unforgettable role in my faith journey. Um, I have grown up here from my baptism to joyful noise to confirmation to mission trips and Sunday services. Kenilworth Union has been a leading factor in making me who I am today. My license defines me as Mia Victoria Solberg, female, 5'3", blue eyes, and born on December 19th, 1997. But if you really get to know me, you learn that my eyes are really more gray than blue, but turn blue when I cry, which is a lot. And I enjoy watching movies, especially the classics. I'm obsessed with my Newfoundland dogs, Lila and Riggins, and I like camping, hiking, skiing, and hanging out with my family and friends. You will also learn that one of the most important things in my life that I don't always have the opportunity to talk about is my faith. My relationship with God is one that will always be a part of my life. I've always been more of a tomboy, and when I was younger, I was a huge tomboy. So when church came around, that meant dresses and tights did too. I kicked and screamed, begging not to go. My frustration had nothing to do with Sunday school, though. The act of going to Sunday school was only guilty by association, because I had to wear those darn tights. <sighs> they were not my style. I was continuously forced to attend wearing those itchy garments. I was in the choir from second to fifth grade, and my voice was atrocious, so my parents slyly encouraged me to start playing sports, and soon enough, I was only singing in the shower. <laughs> I remember writing an essay before being confirmed. I talked about how, God, how I see God as a light that shines through people's smiles, laughter, tears, and hugs. Impressive, right? I mean, uh... But after being confirmed, my, w my faith wavered because it was now up to me to force myself to go to church. I rarely followed through, and my relationship with God suffered due to my lack of effort. But on my mission trips, I learned a lot more about God through service. On my first mission trip, I remember sitting in a circle with my group in Panama. It was our first uh, night time devotional, and I had been having serious doubts about God. I thought people only believed in God because they needed something, and he was just something to keep them sane through the suffering. But something hit me that night. I felt a sense of trust and comfort from God. Through mixing cement, painting, dancing, singing, and playing with the kids, I gained a new perspective of the world, one with God in it, one where when I gasped, thank God, I really meant it. I saw people in pain and with so little praise God and trust him to help support them through thick and thin. Um, I have also been so lucky enough to be a part of impact trips to the Bahamas, Guatemala, and have been looking forward to this summer's trip to Jamaica ever since we landed in Guatemala last summer. One day, I just really felt like getting 16 hours of community service done. So I asked Sylvie what I could do. I started coming to, into church and shredding papers, and wow, Either they thought I'd be in a too big of a rush to read anything, or they really trusted me with those secret files that had to be shredded. Both are probably true. I didn't actually read anything, don't worry. <laughs> but in those times, I really felt the support of my dream to complete those community service hours, 16 exactly. KUC had my back. One day, I finished shredding papers and was lucky enough to have time to go do some dishes. As I scrubbed, Dr. Evertsburg came through the kitchen and offered to help. Luckily for him, I was almost finished, but I will never forget those few minutes in the kitchen, and I love saying goodbye and thank you to Dr. Evertsburg after each service. I'm so thankful each and every time I get to hear him speak. It has completely changed church for me in a very positive way. The first time I met him was when we were cleaning up a house in Chicago to be rebuilt, and I remember shaking his hand and just thinking to myself, wow, that guy seems really cool. And after conversations with my grandma, Tommy Solberg, where she spoke so highly of him, I knew I was right. And now he's a big reason that many of us, especially me, continue to come to church. I believe that someone's relationship with God is personal and unique. Your relationship does not have to be like your mom's or your dad's. It doesn't have to be like your friend's. It is yours and it's his. It's only what you make it. God isn't going to force you to recognize him because it's a two-way street. What you put in is what you get out. 
I cherish my relationship with God. He is a father and a friend. I believe he has so much love for us because we are his children, and no matter what happens, he will always love us. It is okay to have doubts. Although it's hard to understand how he can love us all so much, my mom always says, Mia, you'll never know how much I love you until you have your own kids. And that is the kind of unconditional love God has for us. Because I know how much I love her, so how can she love me so much more? <laughs> we are all his children, and through thick and thin, he will love us. But what is love? Something I always remember is when my dad said, if I could write love as an equation, it would be love equals caring. And in that moment, it really hit me. I always saw God's love as light, but it is so much more than that. Love is caring and proving you care through actions more than words. I feel like I'm like five feet, sorry. Um, another one of the most important things in our lives that my parents taught me at a young age is forgiveness. To forgive takes strength, and God will always be by your side through it. When you ask God for forgiveness, know that it is granted. And even, others do not, even if others do not ask you for forgiveness, forgive them. We aren't accepting what happened and saying it was okay. We're just acknowledging the fact that it happened. Forgiving is the willingness to see the person in the light of love and not in the action of what occurred. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. That's Luke 637. Got to give the creds out. So as my faith has grown stronger, I've been lucky enough to want to attend church. Although finding an outfit to wear is still the hardest part of my Sundays. My mom made me change my outfit three times today, so um, I'm wearing, like, my sister picks out my outfits every day. So um, although finding an outfit, yeah, and I love the music here. Seriously, voices are beautiful. I I'm glad I'm not in it because I would ruin it. But um, the music, and I will never forget let the sermons, letters from prison, because I was so blessed to listen to them and discuss them with my dad. He basically tested me on what they were about afterward. Even if I'm sitting alone in the corner when my dad is out of town, I cherish this beautiful place. But my relationship with God is not perfect, and I didn't wake up one morning and suddenly have faith. It has been a journey and one that has grown this much because of Kenilworth Union Church. So thank you for being a part of this incredible community here at KUC, and it wouldn't be such a warm and special place in so many people's hearts if it wasn't for everyone here. Thank you.